the education sector it's, it's one of the major sectors we have in this country and, and rightly so you see the MPP administration investing a lot when it comes to free senior high school and so on. That's also a major campaign topic going into this election. The NDC is talking about reviewing it uh, to make it better. The NPP is talking about improving it to make it better. However the case, this is a policy that at least all the political parties are getting into. But beyond that, what does the larger education sector issues really uh, uh, play out? That's the conversation we're going to be having tonight. And Kofi Asari is as a director of the Africa Education Watch, one of the foremost education CSOs we have in this country. He's joining us, Kofi, it's good to have you. Hi, good evening, Al. Before we start, uh, you saw the WASI report from WAEC. We've had another episode of litany of the, the, these irregularities, mobile phones being sent in, vigilators projecting the, <laughs> the answers on the board for students, right? I mean, can we ever get a hold of this, of this situation quickly? Well, I think, um, yes, it is regrettable that um, we haven't made good progress in terms of examination room collusion, um, speaking from the statement that WAEC issued. Um, we, as an organization, monitored WASI. Uh, our report was published in December. Um, and the findings that um, WAEC issued in that preliminary statement, uh, to a high extent, confirms what we saw in the over 100 schools that we monitored. Mm. Um, but it is also important, Alfred, to note that while we have, I mean, we are struggling, you know, to deal with the examination room collusion mm -hmm. um, by seeing projectors being brought into the field now. Um, in the past, it was whiteboards and blackboards being used to write questions and then uh, printed versions of answers being circulated. Now we have projectors. Mm -hmm. While we haven't made good progress at that point, um, and it's indeed disturbing, um, we take some comfort in the fact that we are not experiencing leakages in the questions. Okay. Um, the, the, the issues relating to examination fraud are multi-dimensional mm. from the demand side and the supply side but the bigger issue now is the domination room collusion and it appears that because it is an issue that involves a lot of human interfaces mm -hmm. we cannot solve it without deploying technology we may have to just think about deploying robots to be <laughs> invigilators going forward. But, yeah. but uh, the bigger issue here is, is a mid-year budget review, um, as we have it. And I know that you'll be doing quite some work. I see that the focus of this mid-year budget review for the education sector is heavy on infrastructure. You know. But for you, what do the results of this mid-year budget review uh, portend to, for the future of education financing and the quality of education in Ghana? Well, um, the mid-year budget review, as presented by the Minister of Finance, had some positive implications for education. Mm -hmm. Recon in, um, in December, November last year, when the main budget was read, mm -hmm. education share of the total government projected expenditure was less than 14%. It was way below the minimum international threshold or benchmark which Ghana has acceded to. Mm -hmm. and, and that was one of the reasons, one of the issues we raised and have been engaging government since on the need to increase the allocation of the national um, 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 uh, budget to at least 15% to education. Mm -hmm. And um, in response, we were happy to note that the finance minister and the media budget allocated one billion extra cities, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the 32.7 billion that was originally allocated in, 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 in the main budget. Mm -hmm. And so by this one billion, which was allocated to get fund, um, it means that the sector share of the, of, the, of the total national budget has increased by about three percentage points. I see. And, and that puts us within, well within, um, the international benchmark, the minimum funding norms for education. So that, that, that's what's um, the positive that the media budget portends um, for education. But there's a challenge of the capping as well, is it not? I mean, you yeah. do this allocation, but then again, exactly. the fund has issues. Exactly. The capping is a major issue, economic issue, political issue, social issue, in terms of its impact and implications, you know. Um, if you if you if you read the budget, the media budget, you realize that even though hundred, um, even though one billion cities more was added to 
the debt fund allocation, increasing it from 3.2 to 4.2 billion. For which reason, the sector's budget now increased to 33.7 billion. Mm -hmm. You still realize that debt fund was only receiving 55% of the debt fund levy accruals, which means we're losing 45% of debt fund levy accruals, which is an estimated 7.6 billion. 7.6 we're, billion. We're losing. Um, t t um, 45 of the expected le levy accruals as a result of the capping. Edward predicts that by the end of December 2024, mm. the sector, the education sector, would have lost at least seven billion cities through repurposing or reallocation as a result of the EMAT capping law, which which witnessed the capping of debt fund. So you make an expert demand that. This capping of get fund should be should be looked at. It should be it should be removed or abolished. It is our foremost demand. We've engaged the political parties um, at the manifesto committee level. We've been consistent with the Ministry of Education and Parliament, and we've always called for the uncapping of get fund. If we uncap get fund, we are going to free as much as uh, as much as fifty billion in the next four years to take care of education. I'm talking about billion cities. 50 billion cities being the total projected get fund um, levy accruals between January of next year and, and, and the next four years. So we are committed to um, the advocacy to ensure that get fund is on cap so that we free more resources and ensure that, for instance, the infrastructural development taking place in secondary um, education, for which reason, um, which is not completed, for which reason we still have the double track lingering, mm. could have can end so that we can have all schools running, you know, um, um, single track. Then we can have enough money to remove our schools and our trees and provide furniture for all schools and all that. So we hope that the next government um, will give prioritized attention to uncapping the get fund to free more resources for the sector. So a couple of days ago, my colleague Dennis Paberi, where I'm during manifesto check, looked at the free senior high school policy and this uh, double track system because the NPP in their manifesto says they're going to phase out the double track system. NDC says they would abolish the double track system, but they all have an idea of doing away with it as to how fast and the process is where the difference lies. Either way, either way, either way, the interventions will involve brick and mortar approaches. Mm. And if you don't free more resources for infrastructural development to catalyze the slow pace or if you like the inadequate pace of completing ongoing infrastructure projects in the secondary education sector. It will be difficult. It will be. And so uncapping get fund is a sure bet to ensuring that every effort to end double track materializes in the not too distant future. I mean, and if you look at the basic level as well, and I've been looking at how the basic education sector in this country is also having its fair share of the challenges. I mean, capitation grant, for instance, how many terms is it in arrears now, if you don't know? Well, the grants are real. I think it is in arrears of about two years, okay? Two years. But when we say it's in arrears of about two years, it doesn't mean a grant has been disbursed this year. Mm. Grant has been disbursed this year. By midterm, about 45% of what was allocated for this year, that's the 84 million, had been released. But there are two things that must happen. The mm. first is that the finance minister must ensure that the, uh, the increased budget mm. as a result of increasing the per unit allocation from 10 to 15 yeah. must be released, okay? Mm. To ensure that for the first time, we are going to have 100% disbursement and utilization of competition grant. We must make sure it happens. The I second think. is that we can't make the increment of competition grant a political issue. You mm. know, in advanced reduction, such fundings are indexed, they are indexed against inflation. So that it's an automatic adjustment formula that determines whether the system should increase it or not. Right. We are, are calling for an indexation mechanism for the capitation grant. And that would be enough to fund the basic school. Because the last time it was increased was in 2018. Look at the inflation between then and now, over 200%. That's true. And so if we have an indexation mechanism fused in, similar to the one we have committed to the IMF to do under the LEAP program, we, we, we would have put the issue of agitating for increment of competition grant and appealing to political authority behind us so that we can focus on ensuring that the grant is utilized properly to affect quality. It's also great to note that the minister announced an increment in the per capita allocation for the Ghana School Feeding Program from 1.2 cities as announced in the main budget to 1.5 Ghana cities. 
We however note that that is woefully inadequate, bearing in mind the high level of, of food inflation. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so if you say one point five Ghana that's one city fifty pesos. Exactly. Okay. And we know it can't even buy an egg, right? Absolutely. Yes. And so it is very, very low, way low, up to about half of what caterers were demanding last year. They were demanding three cities. The point I want to make is that when we are able to increase such allocations to reasonable economic levels and disperse timely, we will be ensuring equitable deployment of funds because such funding, like the Ghana School Feeding Program, goes to support access to education by the poorest of the poor. Mm. And so the prior priority we accord budgeting, disbursing, and spending on such equitable lines or social protection lines like the Ghana School Feeding Program and the capitation grant is for me the surest way or the best way to ensure that there is equity in, the, in, in, in education financing. And that is why I want to emphasize that we want to see much more enhanced disbursement of mm -hmm. funds for capitation grants and school feeding program, mm -hmm. and also increasing the school feeding program further from 1.5 cities to at least 3 cities, so that we will not be just be serving um, you know, um, poor people food, but we'll be serving them poor, poor people um, nutritious and quality food that will enhance their learning experience. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Kofi Asari is uh, the executive director of the Africa Education Watch. Kofi, appreciate you as always. And uh, this is Ghana tonight. And we'll spend some time talking about this because uh, uh, we've spent some time on manifesto check, uh, getting into the matters of education and then also the free senior high school policy and what the political parties, the major political parties, MPP and NDC, are, are saying about this free senior high school policy. And um, Kofi, appreciate you for uh, that thought on what has to be done as well going forward. But this is your election command center. We'll go continue to engage uh, these experts and civil society organizations on specific sector-related issues going into election 2024. But